This is my reaction to Landscape Artist of the Year 2022 Scottney Castle Kent episode. Let's get started. All right, the Scottney Castle episode, Scottney Castle Kent. This is what Scottney Castle Kent looks like when you do an image search for it on Google. And so this is, I suppose, the way it looks, but it's not the way it looked on the day of the filming of the program. It's considerable, considerably grayed out. And so we're going to take a look at that. But first, I wanted to give you the actual resource photo of what Scottney Castle looks like. And here's another view of the castle. Again, this is from Google search images. So um, there's pretty good structure to draw in here, but again, this is not where they were set up and it is not what the light looked like on that day. And here's the final view that I got from Google Images. Again, um, beautiful place, but not the way they were set up for the episode and certainly not the light from that day. The light is much grayer. And now we're gonna look at an image from the actual program of where they were set up and what they were painting. Now, this image is kind of fuzzy, but this was the best I could do when it came to screen capture. There were almost no actual views of what the, what the painters were painting that day, which is unusual in the program, but, uh, but uh, the world isn't perfect. And so this tends to be what they were looking at. And um, I would agree that that is a challenge um, although when I look at it, I can start to edit and see places where I would break this image up into uh, probably three separate paintings. But, um, but that's me. We're not talking about what I would do today. We're talking about what the contestants did. This is what the actual view looked like on that day, as you will see it in the program very briefly. And now let's take a look at what the participants did as their final pieces. So fasten your seatbelts, here we go. I don't like to criticize people's work, but that's what the job is for today. So let's look at contestant number one. And this is what she painted. Um, it was a little bit more vibrant in real life, although the colors tended to be pastel colors overall. She's really spent a lot of time on the foliage in the foreground and not as much on the structure of the castle behind. Uh, there's movement. There's definitely some, um, you know, dramatic verticals and horizontals and, and a, a nice job of making something that's completely uh, static uh, look like it, there is some movement. So I appreciated the painterliness of this and the clean color. Here's one that is definitely more represent, re representative um, and really, I think, captured the reflections that were happening in the water, which is a, a big part of, I think, what the setup was for the day. I enjoy the lost edges. Lost and found edges are happening. Um, good draftsmanship. Uh, I, I believe it's an oil painting. I'm, I'm pretty sure that it is. Probably looks to me like a lot of work with a palette knife as well. But there's definite structure to hold on to there. And um, I always love a nice vertical and diagonal. I'm always happy with that. So that was contestant number two. Now let's go to contestant number three. This is where I start to get lost. I always get lost. <laughs> there are certain contestants where I get lost because I cannot find any structure. I cannot find an underlying no tan or value-based structure to what the person is doing. And so I don't know how to anchor into this painting. I can see it, um, which doesn't mean I don't appreciate abstract painting. I do. But um, I always feel stunned, a little bit like, what? where were they standing and what were they looking at? There, there's not a lot of value um, changes going on here and certainly no structure. So I, although I've said a lot about it, there's really not much to say about it. The next one was very interesting because of the way he handled the surface. He put some sort of gluey substance down and allowed that to kind of drip and uh, work across the um, horizontals of the image. I found that uh, really distracting and unnecessary. I actually really like this painting and the way that the, he's created atmosphere and the grayness of that day. And I just find that sort of, oh, I hate to say gimmick, but you know, sometimes, sometimes people fall back on a gimmick because it makes them different. And, uh, but I don't think it really contributes a lot to this painting. 
doesn't mean I don't like textured paintings. I do. But um, I think the water was almost a mirror glass. And I would have been very interested to see what he did with that, considering the way he treated the surface of the, the castle behind. But, um, but I do like this one. Uh, the next one is somewhat inexplicable for me <laughs> because I appreciate the design, I appreciate the, um, the shapes, I appreciate that there are value changes. We've got darks, mediums, and lights. Uh, you get a sense of place. You get a sense of um, abstract colliding with a certain degree of what would have been narrative or, or some realism. So there's something happening there that's evocative of the, the place itself. I think this might be a collage. It, it sure looks like it might be because of uh, the way the edges are and the way the foliage is handed in front. But there's painting happening as well. So that is contestant number five. Now let's go on to contestant number six. Now contestant number six, once again, um, Oh boy, uh, my eye just gets scattered all over the place. I just, I want my artist, I want my artist to make a decision for me about where they want me to look. I want them to decide where the masses are, where they want me to look, and where they want to put my attention, where they want to soften edges and let me wander away. I really, I, I, I'm asking for some editing here, and I think that I could find a really good painting in this if I could crop, um, crop, yeah, crop, probably I, I can see a pretty substantial good square in there that I would use. But again, that's me. Um, I do appreciate the neutrals, all the colors used in the neutrals here. And that was certainly was the way the day was. It was a very neutral colored day. So I think their color choices were quite accurate. Not that a painting should match match a photo um, what's in front of you necessarily the next one really pumped color up and I like that I like the movement I like the pumping up the color but I think in all that they kind of lost the sense of the place itself uh, this could be almost any place let's say I didn't get a sense that he captured the the actual castle it's itself in any way um and you know almost like when you do a portrait it doesn't have to be an exact resemblance of somebody, but you want to get a sense that the person was captured in some way, their personality was captured, or their likeness was captured, and I just find that completely missing from this piece. But once again, that's me, and I'm not a judge. Now, the last one is what I consider really good painting. This, to me, is where, what I strive to do. Uh, there is, it's, it clearly shows the way the day was, that it was a grayish kind of day, um, the values that are chosen are varied, but kept with soft tones. There's definitely structure there. There's lost and found edges. And there's a sense of atmosphere. And this painter definitely has control of the medium. You get a sense that you're in good hands. This person didn't just sit down and decide to attack this thing. There was something very planfully done. And this is someone who has a lot of experience. And it you know, it just shows. Good painting just shows. Now let's look at the three that were shortlisted. What happens is out of these contestants, three are shortlisted and one is picked as the winner to go forward, I believe. So this was the first of the three that were shortlisted. This was the fellow who had put that dark, um, gluey substance in, in, front, in front on his painting. And it shows the, the painting on the left is the one that he submitted in order to be in the competition. So it's kind of fun to see and get a sense of what their style is when they're painting for themselves and what it is when they're in the competition. And um, you can see a consistency of palette and, um, you know, good on him. So he was shortlisted, first one that was shortlisted. The second one that was shortlisted uh, of the three that were chosen was this one. Uh, to me, they're almost the exact same painting. I, I, uh, I always get speechless because I just want to grab the painting by the lapels. <laughs> I want to grab the painting by the lapels and say, pull yourself together, man. Pull yourself together. Because there's a lot of good stuff happening here, but there aren't any connecting threads or blocks of structure that allow me to read the painting as a whole. And I always find that incredibly frustrating. 
almost like someone had taken the chapters of a book and thrown them all around, but no one put them in the correct order so I can read them. Now, this is the winner of the heat. And as I said before, no question, he's a good, good painter. Yeah, I mean, my God, he's a very fine painter. There, and on the left is the submission that he got. Uh, that he put in to be in the competition. On the right is the one that he did to win the heat. I'm glad he won the heat. I didn't get hot under the collar this time for a change because I really agreed with their decision. Good painting should be honored and respected, and I believe it was in this case. So that is the episode for 2022 Landscape Artist of the Year, Scott Castle in Kent, and I believe there's one more episode. These episodes are so impossible to find in sequence on Landscape Artists of the Year channel, but I'm doing the best I can, and I hope you're enjoying it. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.